So, the next is what is the quantum limit of uh, photo detection? Quantum limit is something that one cannot uh, one cannot uh, do anything external to limit that uh, minimize that noise. Thermal noise we have discussed we can always reduce the temperature and uh, bring the thermal noise down right. But if you always wish your that wish that the receiver is operating in the short noise limited uh, domain simply because you are now operating in the quantum limit. So, now what if I have a coherent receiver? Again, it is direct detection only, I am not doing our phase detection, it is still a direct detection system. I either have a coherent receiver or I have put my uh, receiver, maybe you are doing a satellite communication, right, and you have put your receiver in some cryogenic uh, condition where the thermal noise is 0, okay. So, for the next couple of uh, uh, slides, what we are going to use is it is an ideal detector, there is no dark current, no thermal noise, 100% uh, quantum efficiency, okay. 100% quantum efficiency would mean that every photon that is incident on my detector is producing one electron hole pair, right. There are no photons lost in the system. This is still whatever we are going to discuss is not true for an APD, this is still for a PD. Uh, even what we discussed here, uh, where would it matter whether it is a PD or an APD? Would this relation be different if it is a PD or an APD? Prob this came from probabilities, that is not going to be different. Would this relation be different? That is also not going to be different. Would this relation be different? I will have to just worry about calculating the thermal noise of my APD rather than PD, right, that is all. So, if there is uh, additional noise factor, so, so, so we have already discussed in the last module how we are going to, how we calculated noise for different types of detector, you have to keep plugging in those numbers for noise. Uh, so, this is again a PD now, here we are talking about 100 percent quantum efficiency, there is no multiplication factor for now, which means that sigma naught is 0, because there is no thermal noise. So, when you have you are going to get a clean 0 and when the signal is high you have noise. You have noise because of short noise, right. Um, the question is now can I do a Gaussian distribution like this? So, in principle you cannot say that I can have a Gaussian. So, remember when we started talking about uh, bit error rate and probability of detection and so on. We just assume that this is a Gaussian, which is true if it is thermal noise limited, but that is not true when it is short noise limited. We discussed this aspect a little bit when we discussed short noise. So, what is the origin of short noise? The arrival of photons, if you remember we calculated some average number of photons and that average photon number turned out to be some 2.5 or 10.5 or something. That fraction simply means that the number of photons are indicating only the average or the mean of a photon arrival statistics, okay. So, we have to now get back to the photon arrival statistics to exactly find out what this receiver sensitivity and your Q would mean for a uh, uh, quantum noise limited system, okay. This is becoming very relevant these days because there is uh, people talk about quantum communication where now you will be operating all your detectors necessarily in the short noise limited uh, condition. So, the photon arrival statistics is a Poisson random process and now we need to write explicitly what that distribution is. For If it is a Gaussian I know it is exponential minus x minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square, right, where mu is my mean and sigma is sigma square is my variance. But if it is a Poisson process, the distribution is given by, sorry, the distribution is given by e power minus np, np raised to n divided by n factorial where what is NP? NP is just the average photon number. How do you calculate NP? We, we did this uh, some time ago. We said number of photons in a bit slot is given by this is energy of the bits, energy of the uh, energy of the, 
the signal during the bit slot. So, we are, we are talking about what is happening here, this is TB. And if this is my uh, P, this P should be my peak power, it is not average power. If I multiply peak divide, uh, with my TB, I get the energy. Energy divided by H nu gives me, sorry, this is incorrect. Energy divided by H nu gives me the number of photons. Okay. So, what is this bit duration? It is equal to uh, bit duration or symbol duration should be equal to 1 over my uh, symbol rate or bit rate. So, that is how you calculate the average number of photons and I, so depending on what peak power I have, I have a certain NP and to give you an example, if my NP is equal to 3, it means that this distribution is going to look like not Gaussian it is going to look something like this, it is a long tailed Gaussian when your n is very small. When n is large, the distribution actually goes this way and finally, it converges to a Gaussian distribution. So, if NP is equal to 3, I should write this as minus uh, 3, 3 raised to n divided by n factorial. So, it simply means that the probability that n photons are received by the probability that I get a one probability that I get one photon during my bit slot is probability of getting one photon is e power minus 3, 3 power 1 divided by 1 factorial. This is exactly the probability of receiving one photon. Probability of receiving two photons would be e power minus 3, 3 power 2 divided by 2 factorial and so on. So, if my average photon number is 3, for instance, what is the probability of receiving 100 photons? It will be e power minus 3, 3 power 100. So, that is a large number, but in the denominator you have 100 factorial. So, that becomes a small number. So, it simply says that there is a non-zero probability of receiving 100 photons within a bit, but that probability goes on reducing. That is the idea of uh, Poisson statistics. Of course, B is a symbol rate, TB is a symbol duration in my earlier definition here. So, now that we know the arrival is uh, the statistics. So, instead of Gaussian, we have to now assume this statistics. And we have to go back and recalculate my probability of error. Right? What was the probability of error? Probability of error was probability of uh, receiving a 1 times probability of if it is an error it is 0 given 1 plus probability of 0 times probability of 1 given 0. So, we have to calculate these for the Poisson distribution and that is not difficult because we have said it is an ideal de detector and in an ideal detector are you receiving any photons here? You are not. So, the number of photons received is 0 here. So, before that before for, uh, calculating the uh, bit error rate, we need to also now say that only the arrival time of the uh, photon is uh, Poisson. What about the electron generation? So, that is where we are assuming that we have 100 percent quantum efficiency, which means for every photon, I have one electron generated. So, which means the probability of generation of m electrons would be simply e power minus n p, n p raised to m divided by m factorial. I just used a different letter to say we were talking about photon number earlier, now you are talking about electron number, but because the quantum efficiency is 100 percent, n is actually equal to m in this case. Okay. So, now we are all set to find out the conditional probabilities. right? So, probability of 1 given that I have sent 0 photons, what would that be? I have sent 0 photons. So, your n p is 0. So, if you put n p equal to 0 here, what do you get? e power minus 0, 0 power m divided by m factorial and that is going to be 0, which means there is no chance of making an error where I am making an error, I, I send 0 photons, but I am receiving 1 photon. There is no such probability existing simply because I have now assumed my detector is ideal. There is no dark current in my detector. What about probability of 0 given 1? So, that is m equal to 0 means I am not detecting any photon. Probability of detection of 0 photon. 
probability of detection of 0 photon is I have just substitute m equal to 0. So, if I put m equal to 0, I have minus n p, I have sent n p photons, but in my bit duration I am receiving 0 photons divided by 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, n p power 0 is 1, so it is just e power minus n p. So, what is my BER? Of course, probability of sending uh, and receiving a 0 and a 1 are equal. You are assuming that last time we discussed both are half. So, it is half e power mi. So, it is half times this probability plus half times this probability. This is my BER, which is nothing but e power minus n. Now, this is a very simple relation now. BER is directly related to the number of photons that you are receiving. Now, we can do some interesting calculations here. Uh, of course, I am reminding you that this again, sorry, this is not h nu here, this is Ptb by h nu. Just reminding you that Np is average photon number. Now, this is going to lead to some very nice interesting things. Let us do a calculation. What is the number of photons required in each bit to achieve a BER of, uh, let us go back to minus 9 because that is what we did for short noise, uh, for thermal noise. Right? If the receiver is operating in the short night limited condition, what is the number of photons required? So, I know that BER is half e power minus NP. So, I want to calculate how many photons should I receive at least so as to maintain so that I am not making any, any error. So, this NP is equal to twice BER natural logarithm of that. Do this calculation, it would mean that you need 20 photons per bit, 20.03 photons per bit. Is there any ambiguity in saying 20.03 photons? There is no ambiguity that is what we have understood that this 20.03 is only indicative of the average photon number. Okay? So, no need to round it off. If you get something like 20.12, retain it as 20.12. Okay? So, this is the number of photons that is required. So, look at the benefit of operating in the short noise limited condition. To get a bitter rate of 1 e minus 9, you need only 20 photons in a bit. So, if you want to get a feel of what this 20 photons is, you have to now calculate the power. Right? So, that is what uh, we are trying to do now. This is independent of bit rate now. That is a very significant difference between short noise limited operation and a thermal noise limited operation. In thermal noise limited operation, you still had a, a bandwidth coming in because of your thermal noise itself. Here, your BER is just dependent on num. Now, it does not matter whether you are operating in 10 gigabaud or 20 gigabaud or 30 gigabaud or anything. Right? So, the question is what is the corresponding average power? And that corresponding average power to achieve a BER of 1 e minus 9 or 10 power minus 9 is what we are calling as receiver sensitivity. Now, to calculate the average power, you would need a bandwidth, you would need lambda and so on. Uh, so, well, to calculate average power, you do not need a bandwidth, you would uh, need only the lambda, right. So, again, here is a mistake. So, you know NP is P T B by H nu. So, you substitute here, uh, you would need a baud rate here, T B. So, let us say this is for 10 gigabits per second system. right? So, the baud rate is, uh, symbol rate is 1 divided by 10 Gbps. If you do this substitution for 15, 15 nanometer, you will end up in something like minus, uh, sorry, 25 point, 25.72 nanowatts. In terms of power, it is minus 45.9 dBm. So, the question is does it depend on how I am achieving my short noise limited operation? It does not depend on. Whether I do a, uh, uh, you know, I freeze everything and uh, put it in cryogenic operation, which is what many of the quantum systems do to bring the thermal noise down, they just put everything in 4 Kelvin or something like that, right? Or I could do heterodyne both the cases, the results are the same. Because all what I need to do is as far as the calculation goes, I have to just ignore sigma t. 
So, this again remember this is peak peak power, this is peak power. So, what would be the average power? So, it, 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 what does it mean physically what does it mean? I am operating my detector in uh, uh, short noise limited condition, bit 0 I am getting actually a 0 uh, current, bit 1. So, during my um, you know symbol duration I need only 20.03 photons, I need to only measure an average of 20.03 photons so as to get a bit rate of 10 power minus 9. Of course, if it is 10 power minus 12 this number is going to change right. Now to be able to get 20.03 photons what is the peak power I am saying I need only minus 45.9 dBm because I typically do not do photon counting I will do a measure power measurement. So, my peak power is minus 45.9 dBm. So, if I take that data and put it on a power meter which is a slow detector what would be the average power if my bits and uh, 1 and 0 it is a 50 percent duty cycle system this is going to be minus 48.9 db 3 db less which means if I have minus 48.9 dBm power in my signal that is good enough to give me a, a, a bit error rate of 10 power minus 9 less than that. Now, it will be interesting to find what is the SNR, what is the signal to noise ratio corresponding to this. So, average power is minus 48, SNR if you calculate, so how do I calculate SNR? Well, that is very simple right, SNR for a short noise limited system is, you do not have to remember the formula, signal, so SNR is signal power by noise power, signal power is RD square P in square, noise power is only short noise, so it will be 2 Q current times bandwidth. So, if I am using a bandwidth of 10 gigahertz this number, so so this cancels right 1 R 1 P n cancels and so, so this is where we said SNR is proportional to the power in uh, short noise limited system right, but, but you substitute it you will get something like SNR is 9 dB. So, this is again something uh, thumb rule to remember if I can use a heterodyne receiver. Uh, my required power is only minus average power is only minus sorry minus 48.9 dBm and my SNR is only required SNR is only 9 dB. What was it the same number for thermal noise limited condition? What was the received power uh, sensitivity? 15.6. SNR required was 15.6 uh, dB, now you require only 9 dB SNR. Uh, of course, we did not calculate what is the uh, sensitivity, it will be an exercise for you to calculate and compare the receiver sensitivity. I am sure uh, it is uh, going to be much much larger for a thermal noise limited system, short noise limited system you are able to operate it at minus 45, minus 46 dBm average power. Okay. So, that completes all the uh, tools for your link design. So, from uh, the next module onwards a couple of modules will spend in trying to do a link design, but before you do a link design uh, you have to also understand one concept on amplifiers otherwise you will be able to design only point to point links. If you want to do a long haul link you would put in amplifiers. So, the next module is going to be uh, one lecture on amplifiers and then we will move on to the link design. Okay. So, that completes today's class.